Why hello there, and welcome to Annex Games, the home of the greatest, the best, the undisputed, most perfect 3D modeling, programming, just art in general, the home of the truest, purest philosophy and wisdom. It is truly beautiful and breathtaking to behold the magnificence of this channel. My name is Justin, and I am going to show you how to make one of the hardest, most challenging things known to 3D artists, a wooden table. Now, we're not just going to use anything to make this wooden table. We're going to model this in Blender. Then we're going to color it in crayon. Before taking it into Substance Painter here and making it look real. Pretty good, honestly. Oh my king, this is perfect in every way. Literally the best. And, you know, once we're done with that, we're going to go and we're going to take it and put it here in Unreal in-game. Absolutely stunning set design, if I do say so myself. I would play the heck out of this game if I wasn't busy making this game, that is. Uh, we set up some LODs, some materials, you know, we got set up proper. Also, I felt brave. We get it set up in Unity as well, although no LODs in Unity. Unity does not automatically generate LODs. And honestly, the mesh is perfect anyway, so I don't think it needs LODs. But yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And you're going to learn a lot. You're going to love it. It's just going to be an amazing experience for everyone involved. We're all going to come together as a family. No, we're going to become closer than family. We're going to become something greater, something more. So, come along and experience the majesty of creating a wooden table in Blender, texturing it in substance, and then exporting it out to your game engine of choice, assuming your game engine of choice is Unreal Engine or Unity. Alright, let's uh, get started with this table here. So, the first thing... I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the Unreal Mannequin. Now, you can export this guy from the Unreal Game Engine yourself, assuming you have all that downloaded. He's not really necessary, though. I'm just going to use him to gauge kind of the scale at the table because yeah I mean he, he's just a really good default game character scaled character and I do tend to build all my assets around do they fit the unreal mannequin if so it's all good so anyway enough about the mannequin Let's, uh, let's block out the table first. So I'm going to start with 0.05 on the Z for this cube. And one. No, I think one's too high. Yeah, maybe like 0 0.9. 0 0.9 meters up in the air. And now one's too short. 
Yeah, 1.5x. Thanks a good width. And I guess three. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of want this table to seat like one person and then like maybe two or three on the side. Maybe it could be like a bit wider. I don't know. I'm going to work with this for now though. It'd be pretty easy to change its dimensions once we are done though. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to create a new cube. And this cube is going to start one meter tall. I think that's a little too thick. Yeah, I think 0.15 on the X and Y are good. Mm. And I know this is uh, technically the block out, but I think I might actually use these for the final, the final thing. I don't know. Really the only thing that's temporary, I guess, is this table. I plan on replacing it with a couple planks. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and kind of set up this beam here. I'm going to go and add some UV seams. Oh wait, I think I, yep, I added an extra seam there. And I'm going to add some modifiers, like a bevel modifier. I'm going to set the limit method to wait. I'm going to go back into edit mode. Set the bevel weight of all these edges to 0.02. And I think I need to apply all the transforms. That, oh, did I not set the weight? I thought I clicked there. Okay, now it's working. Everything's applied, and it's fine. So bevel's on. What else? I'm, I'm probably going to use a displace. And I'm going to create a new texture for that. I'm going to set that to be clouds. I'm going to change that strength to be like 0.05 for now. Yeah, that's maybe a bit strong. Actually, I'm going to put that before the bevel because it can... Uh, I wonder if I can get to show it, but yeah, if you do it after the bevel, you get all sorts of fun little errors like that. Which, uh, yeah, I don't want that. So I'm going to do it before. Definitely before. Alright, so that's... that's good. Maybe I'll go and add... three loop cuts. Yeah, that's fine. And I'll set it to Shade Smooth. Maybe I'll lower the strength to 0. 0.0. Let's click there, 0. 0.03. Yeah, I think that's a bit better. All right, so. Yeah, I think 0. 0.5 on the X. And. Yeah, one on the Y might work. Okay, so now I'm going to duplicate this. Minus 0.5x. Duplicate both. And minus 1 on the y. And I'm going to alt enter that to apply it to both. So I got these set up now. Now I'm going to select all of them. 
And, oh yeah, I already have it turned on, but I'm going to turn on my snap method to face and turn snapping on, then grab Z, those up to the table. Yeah, that's looking pretty all right. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate this, put it to zero. Oh wait, that's zero X. I meant to do zero Y because I want to build a supporting frame around under here. I want this to be a pretty realistic looking table. Obviously, if we're going for like really low poly, this would be fine if we're going for low detail, low poly. This is all you really need. But we're going to go for a more high poly, high detail version. So this is going to be what, maybe 0.1? Yeah, those look fine. I'm going to grab Z that up and scale it on the Y just a bit. Okay, these loop cuts are completely in the wrong space though. So I'm just going to dissolve those. Mm. Yeah, I also need to clear some of these seams. Should have, like, rotated it, but... YOLO. Instead, I'm going to clear the seams, add in a few new ones. Okay. And now I'm going to grab these and just start scaling it along the Y. I want to get it just a little past there. And I'm going to move it out on the X. And then back, I'm going to snap it onto there. I'm going to duplicate it. Move it over, and then snap it. And I should rotate this on what is my access do I need to do? On the Y by 180 to flip the seam around to the back again. Now that I got these two here, I'll duplicate them again. Rotate on the Z90. Alright, yeah. Don't want to scale because then they'll get bigger. Just gonna move them. Then snap it onto there. And I want to snap this onto those wooden beams that are sticking out. And now I need to do the same here. So I'm going to snap it on the Y. And the X. Get over there. Okay. Yeah, I think that I think that's good. 
Now I'm going to adjust these. I'm going to snap their Y to the other beam. All right. Okay, so now we have the basic frame. And what about this? That the seams are at the back and the seams are at the back. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Now this uh, next part I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say is quite unnecessary. I mean, unless the table is gonna be like flipped in a game, I wouldn't really worry at all about this, but I'm gonna add some back supports here as well, because, you know, I might as well. I might as well. I'm gonna go all the way. Okay, and the seams are facing that way. Gonna grab these. Move them. I think it's not snapping so well through that table. Snap to there. Okay. Now I'm going to duplicate this piece. Rotate it on the Z by 90 again. I'm going to snap the X there. And then there. And put the Y there. Now I'm going to do This piece. Okay. So now what we've done is we have made this. But I think one, I think I want this to be maybe a little narrower. What did I do? Okay, maybe I'll just... What if I apply all the transforms? And I do 0.025. Okay, it moves it all the way over there, but... It is also... A little narrower now. Which, I don't know, it feels, feels right to me, have it be a little narrower. I don't know exactly, but... Okay, now these, obviously they don't really match up anymore, but that, that is okay. I think one thing I also want to do is I want to make these so they have an angle. I'm going to take this. I think I need to set to vertex. Maybe I should turn off displace for this. Make sure it's all right. Okay. Yep, yep. Mm 
This might be a little, a little far forward. It's gonna hit seven, the numpad, and move it around a little by hand. Okay. Yeah, that looks fine to me. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna take this. And I'm gonna turn this place off since it's pushing them through each other for now. Maybe I can just adjust the strength. Yeah, I don't think it really matters that much, but all right. Enough playing around with that. Can duplicate that. Oh wait, I wonder. Okay, if I rotate. All right, if I rotate on the Z90, it ends up over here. Good to know, I guess. Oh yeah, vertex, vertex. That would be why it wasn't working. I need to put it back on vertex snap mode. Rookie mistake. Very rookie mistake, indeed. No oh, wait, I meant to rotate on the Z180. Yep. Okay, then got those snapped in. And all right. I think that basically finishes up our block out for the table and its frame.